Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about hedging currency exchange rates. It is based on this book and you can click on the image or the link below the video. If you invest in foreign countries, then you are exposed to changes in both the value of the investment and currency fluctuations. Hedging tries to lower the effect of the currency fluctuations. Examples of currency hedged exchange traded funds or ETFs that invest in the S&P 500 are the VSP and XSP for Canada, IGAS for the UK, IUS for Europe and IHVV for Australia, and there are others. But currency hedging is not perfect and it sometimes performs worse or better than unhedged investments. So let's look at the reason why currency hedging is necessary. Let's say we exchange from Euro to US dollars and after one year we exchange back to Euro. So the formula for calculating the annual return is this. We have the exchange rate after one year divided by the exchange rate for this year or today minus one. And if we do that for all the exchange rate in the period 1999 to 2015 and we plot it in a histogram, then we get this. As we can see, the annual returns could be quite extreme. They could be as low as minus 25% or as high as plus 30% but a lot of the annual returns were greater than minus 10% or plus 10%. So it would be desirable to eliminate these large changes in the currency exchange rate. So let's say we are European and we invest 10,000 US dollars in the S&P 500. To hedge for currency fluctuations, we first borrow $10,000 and then we exchange it to 8,000 euro at today's exchange rate of 0.8, let's say. Then we invest the 8,000 euro in European risk-free bonds. After the year, we get 8,000 euro plus the bond yield in Europe, which let's say for this example is 5%. But we also have to repay the loan of $10,000 plus interest rate in United States, which let's say it is 6%. So we have hedged 10,600 US dollars to 8,400 euro. And this gives an effective exchange rate of 0.792 approximately. And this is quite close to our desired exchange rate of 0.8. So in this case, the hedging worked quite well. We can also calculate the hedging cost as a percentage. And we have this formula here where we have the one plus the interest rate for our loan in United States. And this is divided by one plus the bond yield in Europe and then minus one. So if we again say that the interest rate in United States is 6% and the bond yield in Europe is 5%, then we plug it into the formula and we get approximately 1%. This is our hedging cost. It is not exactly 1%, almost. The hedging cost is negative, which means there is a profit on the hedge if the interest rate in United States is lower than the European interest rate. For example, if the United States interest rate is only 4%, then we plug in the numbers and we get about minus 1% in hedging cost. And you will note that the hedging cost is approximately the difference between the interest rate. So 4% minus 5% is exactly minus 1%. But the formula is not subtraction, it is division. So it is only approximately minus 1%. Now let's look at an example where the currency had malfunctions. So recall that we had invested 10,000 US dollars in the S&P 500, and let's say that value decreases to 7,000 US dollars, so a decrease of minus 30%. But we still have to repay the 10,000 US dollars that we had as a hedging loan. And in this example, we'll, we will ignore the interests. So we only see how the hedging itself malfunctions, regardless of the interest rates, which may either add to the malfunction or subtract from the malfunctioning depending on the difference in interest rates and the cost of the hedging. So let's say the exchange rate is now 0.9 and it was 0.8 when we made the hedge. So in order to repay the 10,000 US dollars, we will have to exchange 2,700 euro back to 3,000 US dollars and then repay the loan. So now we only have 8,000 euros minus 2,700, which gives 5,300 euro, and this means we have lost 33.75%. This loss consists of 30% on the S&P 500 and 
3.75% on the currency. But in reality, the currency gained 12.5%. So if we didn't use a hedge at all, our net loss would only be 21.25%. The currency hedge malfunctions, which means it gives a worse exchange rate than we desire when A, there is a gain on the investment and a loss on the currency, or B, there is a loss on the investment and a gain on the currency. And in this latter case, an unhedged investment would always be better because the loss on the investment would be somewhat offset by the gain on the currency. So the conclusion is that hedging is useful if you believe the foreign currency may significantly decrease in value. Hedging lowers the impact of currency fluctuation but does not eliminate it. Currency hedges are normally reset on a monthly basis to lower the side effects of malfunctioning hedges. The cost of currency hedging depends on the difference in interest rates between the two countries. The book gives more details and you can click on the image or the link below the video.